Hello everyone and welcome back to NP Station. So this is the second part of the Connect4 project. We are just going to be continuing from the previous video. Before we get started with the coding, I want to make sure that you guys know that the code for the entire project is linked down below in the description. Um, it is my GitHub link so you can find the code there. All right, but that's enough said. Let's go ahead and continue coding. So we're going to start off where we left before, which is from this modify turn function. So we're actually done with that method. We're going to move on to another one, which is going to be called check for winner. And we're going to have a chip parameter in this method. OK, so in this method, what we want to do is create four different for loops, and it is going to check which player either the user or the computer won the game so first let's go ahead and start off by check checking the horizontal spaces and here let's start off with that for loop for y and range rows we'll have rows here as the parameter and then this is going to be a nested for loop so we'll have for x in range and we'll have our columns here minus three so in this for loop, we need an if statement, which is going to use the game board with the X and Y. And we're going to check if that equals chip. So we need to do this um, three times. So we'll say and game board X, except here we're going to add one to the X variable. And Y is equal to chip and game board x plus 2 y and finally the last one is equal to chip so here in the if condition we want to print so we use that print statement and in quotes backslash n so we go to the next line and we're going to say game over and we want to print out the chip that won so we'll put that chip parameter and we'll say wins. So it'll continue like the sentence. Thank you for playing. OK, so we're also going to end that if statement by saying return true. Now what we want to do is actually copy and paste the same for loop another time here. And we're just going to change a few things. But first, I'm just going to put that comment in check for vertical spaces that's what this loop is going to do okay so here we need to change up the for loop so for x in range rows and then our nested would say for y in range and that line would remain the same but line 39 the if condition instead of incrementing the x variable we need to increment the y variable so just go ahead and change that according to how it's already written so instead of x plus 3 here it would be y plus 3 and that's all we're changing for that for loop. Again, copy and paste. And here, this for loop is going to check for, or we can just say upper right to bottom left. Um, and this is gonna be diagonal spaces. That's what this for loop is gonna do. Okay, so here what we want to change is, this is going to go back to the X, and this is Y. And here, this would be rows minus three. And this is going to be three comma columns. Now in our if condition, we actually want to increment the X and uh, reduce the Y. So Y minus one, Y minus two, Y minus three, and everything else remained the same. Last time, go ahead and print or paste this. This one, we're going to be checking for upper left to bottom right. Again, diagonal spaces. And here, for this loop, we're keeping it the same as before. So it'd be 4x in range rows, minus 3, because it's diagonal. And this is going to be col columns minus three. So we'll keep that the same. Now in this if condition, we actually are going to increment both variables. Y plus one, Y plus two, Y plus three. And here to end this for loop, 
Make sure you're in the same indentation as that first one from the 4x in range and what you want to do is just say return false. Okay, and we're finally done with the check for winner method. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next one which is going to be called coordinate parser. Okay, so in here, I'm going to create a parameter called input string. So let me just explain what this method is going to do. Basically, our board game is going to be spaced or designed to have the numbers on the top and then the letters running on the side. So our, our user is going to have to enter a specific combination of letters and numbers in order to tell the computer which space they want to put their chip in. So the, we need to translate that language into something the computer can understand, which is why we're creating this coordinate parser method. So let's say the user enters A0 um, as their spot that they want to enter in. Well, the computer really isn't going to understand what A0 means. So this parser method is going to turn that into basically a coordinate point. So then the computer knows exactly where to place that chip the user wants to enter it in. So that's what this method is going to do. Let's go ahead and start off by creating a coordinate array. So we'll initialize this and we're actually going to have no, no like values um, initialized in here, but we will have two slots for values to be put in this array. So basically it's going to have a null value at first. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create some if statements. We're going to use that input string parameter and we're checking that first index value of the array. And if it equals A, that's the first if condition. If it does equal A, we're gonna use the coordinate parameter and we're setting that first array to zero. So we need a bunch of other elifs here. So it'll have basically the same format, zero is equal to the next letter, which is B. And here we're going to have the coordinate, so the first index, and we're going to set that to 1. Now, since we need the same elif multiple times, we can just go ahead and copy and paste for A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So now what you want to do is let's just go ahead and change all of these letters to the right ones. So it would be A, B, C, D, E. And then we're also going to change the numbers which is the index, so two, three, and finally six. Okay, so now we're done with the elifs, we need to end this off with an else statement. And what this is gonna do is, um, it's gonna be useful if the user prints an invalid number or letter, so that's why we're just gonna say invalid and that will be printed to the user. Okay, so we're done with these if conditions. Now what we can do is use that coordinate array, take that zero index, and then we're going to cast it as an int and say input string with index one. And finally, we're going to return the coordinate array. Okay, so that's all for our coordinate parser method. It's going to be super helpful later on. So the next method is going to be called is space available. The parameter here will be intended coordinate as this method is called is space available it is going to check whether the space entered by the user is available or not for example if there's already a chip at space d5 then the user needs to recognize that that space isn't available and needs to print out to the user saying pick another space something like that so that's what this method is going to do First, we need an if condition. It's going to use that game board, and then we'll use that uh, parameter that we just created, the intended coordinate, index zero. And again, we're going to say intended coordinate, index one. We're going to close both square brackets, and then we need to check if that equals this red chip. You can go ahead and just copy and paste this from above in the code here, which you have uh, written like in the, from the previous video. So if it equals the red chip, then we're going to return false. And then we'll have an elif here, 
game board intended coordinate zero and then we'll have the at one is equal to blue chip we're going to also return false we need an else to return true so if um, basically these two if conditions are checking if that coordinate the user entered has a red chip or if it has a blue chip then it's going to return false meaning that that space is not available and or this else what that is doing is saying if there is no chip in that space then it will return true because that space is available for the user to place their chip in okay and then we're also just going to end this off by having a turn counter uh, variable set it equal to zero which we'll be using later on but i'm going to end the second part right here in the next video we actually are going to be doing something that is super significant for this project which is a gravity checker method so in the next video we will be completing the connect for project which i am super stoked about um, so just stay tuned for that but that is all for today's video if you enjoyed it please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to np station that's all for today keep reading keep coding and stay safe